Hi everybody! So today we're going to finish chapter 4 and talk about 4.5 exponential models. Okay, so let's look at some examples. We actually have everything we need to do these problems. Okay, so we're going to be, this is what this section is all about. We're going to be writing the equation of exponential functions, and then in the later examples we'll be using exponential functions and function notation. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Okay, so the first thing we have to remember is what does an exponential function look like? Okay, so in this case we're using n, you can see. Okay, so we'll have n of x is equal to a times b to the x. Okay, so remember this a times b to the x is the general format for an exponential function. Okay, a is the initial amount. Okay, and then B is the growth or decay rate. Okay, so in this example, we're actually given right here at the beginning, remember this means that 0, 0,500 is one of the points on this graph. Okay, so we're actually given the initial amount, right? Zero is the starting value, so we're actually given the value of A, okay? So just based on this first value, right, we can fill in that value for A, okay? Now, it doesn't initially give us a growth rate. It doesn't say it doubles or it triples or anything like that, okay? So we're going to have to plug in this second point, okay? So just like I said, this is 0, 0,500, right? This is the point to 1,500, okay? So we're going to plug that point in here, okay? So here we go. We're going to plug in 1,500 for y. Okay, and then we're going to plug in 2 for x. Okay, now we know how to solve an x squared type of equation. We're going to divide both sides by three by 500. Okay, and then we're going to square root both sides. Okay. Now I purposely left out the plus or minus, okay, because exponential functions have positive bases, okay? So now we're going to use this information, okay, to fill in our equation. So before we had n of x equals 500 times b to the x, right? And now we're going to fill in our value for b. Okay, now there is another way that you can write this. Remember, root 3 is the same as 3 to the 1 half power. Okay, so you could write this. Oops. Okay, in the exponential form like this. And because we do already have an exponent, this is probably a better form, and that would be my final answer. Okay. All right. So just to recap what we did, right, we use this point 0, 0,500 to fill in our initial amount, okay, and that gave us this, okay. Then we plugged in our second point here, and that allowed us to solve for b, 
okay? And then we plugged in our value of B for the final equation, okay? Let's do another example. Okay, so again, we're going to use our base format like this. Okay, and remi remember when we have this point with the zero as the x value, that's our initial amount. So we're going to fill in our initial amount here. Okay, all right, and then we're going to use our other point, which is 584, to try to solve for b. Okay, so we're plugging in 584. Okay, and solving for b. So we're going to divide both sides by 42. Okay, and now this is something we have to remember from chapter 3. Right, when we have b to the fifth, we're gonna take the fifth root of both sides. Okay, so fifth root of b to the fifth, that's b. And over here, we're gonna rewrite this as an exponential, okay? All right, so now we have our value of a, we have our value of b, we're ready to write our final function. So remember a was 42 and now we know that b is 2 to the 1 fifth. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example like this. Okay, now for this one, we actually don't know the initial amount. Okay, so there's nothing we can do right away. So what we're gonna do is for each one of these, we're gonna plug in the point. So this is the point one six, this is the point two eighteen, and we're gonna plug each of those in, okay? Okay, and then I'm just gonna simplify this. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the smaller one, which is this one, and we're going to make a fraction with the larger one. Okay. So we're going to do big over small. Okay. So this would be 18 equals a over b, a b squared, okay? And then we're gonna do both of these, so over six and over a b, okay? Now 18 divided by six is three, okay? And then over here we can simplify our fraction, so a divided by a is one, b squared over b, that cancels one of these, so I'll just have b, okay? So that actually allows me to fill in my value for b. Okay, and now I can just fill in any one of the other values, right? So we're going to go back to the point Okay, it doesn't matter which point you plug in. I'm just going to do the first one one six Okay, so I'm plugging in one six Okay, divide both sides by three. Okay, and I get a equals two. So now I can finish writing my equation. Okay, 
And that's what happens when you don't have the initial value. You plug in both points and then you can divide them like this. Okay, let's look at another example like that where we don't have the initial value. Okay. All right, so I'm going to plug in each one of these, right, to our generic function, which is just a times b to the x. Okay, so this would give me equals a times b to the fifth. Okay, and then over here I'm going to have equals a times b to the eighth. Okay, so again, we're gonna make a fraction of the bigger one over the smaller one. That's a, b to the fifth, okay? And now I'm gonna divide. Now you would divide these numbers with your calculator for sure, okay? And when I divided them, I got 125. Okay, here my a's are gonna cancel. b to the eighth over b to the fifth is b cubed, okay? And now I'm gonna take the cube root of both sides. Okay, cube root of b cubed is b. Okay, cube root of 125 is 5. Okay, so I would be able to fill in the value for b. Okay, and then I can use either one of the points, okay, to find the value for a. Okay. Okay, now you do need a calculator for this, okay, so I'm going to get mine out. So first of all, 5 to the 5th, okay, okay, and then I'm going to divide both sides by that big number, 3125, okay. Okay, and I got 1.3. Okay, so this is going to let me write my final function 1.3 times 5 to the x. Okay. All right. Let's do one more like that. Okay, so I'm going to plug in each one, right? Okay, and then I'm going to divide them bigger one over smaller one. Okay, now 1450 divided by that is going to be, I might just reduce this fraction.
Okay, the a's cancel, and then b to the fifth over b cubed, that's going to be b squared. Okay. All right, so on the left side, I just reduced my fraction, and on the right, I reduced. Okay, so now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, now on the left, I'm just going to have root 29. Okay, and then down here, I'm going to have 2 root 6. Okay, and on the right, I'll have b. All right. So this is going to give me my function. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to plug in either of my points. Okay. okay, now you definitely need a calculator for this. Okay, I would use a calculator for both parts of this, cubing this side and then also dividing 1200 by that final number. Okay. And when you do, you should get A is approximately, okay, 0 0.04. Okay, so if we're going to use approximate values, okay, we can also do that for B. Okay, so if you wanted to plug in B to a calculator, okay. So you really get 1.10, okay? All right, so I would have 904.04 times 1.1 to the x, okay? And that would be my final answer. Okay, so that's what you do when you have two points like that, whether the points are in function notation or not. So let's look at an example of what can happen if you have a graph. Okay. So first let's look at this graph. So we'll have this point at 0, 1, okay, this point at negative 1, 1, okay, and then this point at 1, 6. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, okay, is remember that our function has this format. Okay, and then we are going to look for the initial value. So the initial value is when x is 0. Okay, so here's the point where x is 0, and you can see that that initial value is 2. So I'm going to fill that in here. Okay, so that's from this point, 0, 2, which gives a equals 2. Okay, then I'm going to look at the difference between this point and this one, okay? I can see that this is the point one. Oh, this is lower than one, sorry. Six, okay, since it's a marked point, okay? And so I'm going to plug in the point 1, 6, okay? So I have here, I'm plugging it in here, right? I have 6 equals 2 times b 
to the 1 power. Okay, divide both sides by 2. Okay, and I get my value of b. All right, so that allows me to write my final equation. Okay, 2 times 3 to the x. Okay, so the 2 is coming from the y intercept, and this you're getting from plugging in a point. Okay, very similar to what we did in the first two examples. Okay, let's look at one more like that. Okay, so remember our function has this basic form. Okay, now our initial value is coming from this point here, okay, which is the point 0, 3. So this tells me that a equals 3. Now I'm going to plug that in. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my other point, this one here, which I know is negative 1 comma 6, okay? I'm going to plug that in. So I have 6 equals, and then I'm plugging in negative 1 for x, okay? Now remember what the negative 1 exponent does. Turns it into a fraction, and then I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, that gives me my value for b, 1 half, okay, and I'm going to plug that into my function. I already knew that a was 3, and I have 1 half to the x, okay? Remember, a b value bigger than 1 than one will give you growth. A b value less than 1 will give you decay, okay? All right. Let's look at one more example. Okay. Okay, so this one is a little different because it actually gives you the model. Here it is. Okay, and then it's going to ask you some questions about it. Okay, so how many deer were predicted by the model in 2010? Okay, so remember, we already have this model. There's only two variables, P of T, which is the population, and T, which is the time. Okay, so because it's giving us a year, okay,
okay? That means it's giving us T, okay? And in 2010, it's been 10 years since 2000, okay? So we're gonna plug in T equals 10, okay? Now remember, for function notation, you have to plug it in here as well as in the equation, okay? Okay, so I'm plugging in 10 for t, okay? And then I would plug this into my calculator, okay? And I would get p of 10 is approximately 0.379, okay? Now remember, this is in thousands, okay? So this is 0.379 thousands, okay? So this would be 379 deer. Okay, all right. Let's look at another question about this. When were there 1,000 deer? Sorry, not 100, but 1,000 deer, okay? So this is asking you about the population, okay? So we're gonna plug in 1,000 for the population, okay? So we're gonna plug it into our original equation Okay, and then we're gonna solve for t. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is divide both sides by 1.2. Okay, so remember this is an exponential equation, right? Because we have the variable and the exponent. So now we need to change to log form. So this is gonna be log base 10 of this value over 1.2, okay, is equal to the exponent, okay? And then the last thing we need to do is divide by 0 0.05, okay? So that would be our exact answer, but since this is a word problem, we probably want an approximate answer too. Okay, so I would plug this into my calculator, and I did it before, and I got 1.58. Okay, so this would be about 1.58 years after 2000. So in 2000. Oh, I guess you could just say after about 1.6 years, okay, which is in 2002. Okay. All right. So those are really the two different types of problems in this section. There's ones where it asks you to write the equation yourself. Okay, and then these ones where they give you an equation and ask you a question about function notation, can you plug it in? Okay, I'll see you guys soon.